you, ladies and gentlemen, for checking out Going Deeper. I'm your host, Matt. Legendary is such an odd term, but I want to use the term legendary because she started in this industry a while ago, which I'd like to get into right in the prime of my like going to the video store down the street and pretending you're 18 years old and grabbing a copy of a DVD and then walking out. There she was right on front and center of it. Uh, a great show starts with a great guest, so let me introduce you to my friend for the evening. You'll know her from such films as Anal Cougar Country and Double Penetration Tryouts 3. You can find links to everything she does from social media to her OnlyFans at sadiesummers.com. Uh, and links to all of that's going to be in the epi episode description, as always. My guest tonight, the stunning Sadie Summers. Uh, Sadie, Bye. thank you very much for coming on with me tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate your time. So we are, I'm in the process of rebranding this show. My my co-host left, um, not in a negative way, wanted to spend more time with his family, and I have excessive free time. We still do our comedy show, whatever. When I saw, okay, Sadie Summers, you know, I, I spoke to your publicist, you could potentially get her on, and I do a little bit of the background on it, right? And I go, oh my God. This is Sadie Summers, but this is someone else too, isn't it? Uh, so I normally start these off by asking how you got into the adult entertainment industry, but this isn't like your first rodeo. You've actually had like two starts in your history. Yeah. Uh, would you yeah. mind giving us a quick recap on how Toby Pacific, the performer from my heavy porn watching college days, uh, went away and came back as Sadie Summers? So if you know Toby, you must have been into some really dirty stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, but you know, yeah, sure. ultimately, this is my second rodeo. So when I was 19 years old, back uh, from my little tiny hometown, I essentially, when I was much younger, I found a movie that changed my life. And that movie was Behind the Green Door. Maybe okay. you've heard of it. Oh, of, yes, I have. And I sure. just like became, the, I was fascinated with the fact that people would like do all these sexual acts on camera. And so when I was 19, I answered a Craigslist ad with the intention of doing porn, and then away I went. So then, let me ask you, why leave? It's interesting, right? So at the time, I was dating, do you know anything about whitewater kayaking? Yeah, no, I thought you were going <laughs> to say, do you know anything about pornography in 2009? I was going to say, I know everything, Sadie. Please continue. Whitewater and kayaking, yeah, little so out of my lane. Okay. <laughs> It's out of most people's lanes. It's a very niche sport, but I was dating a professional whitewater kayaker who we spent a lot of time traveling around to different mountain towns. So like aside from doing pornography, I'm really into mountain biking and hiking and skiing. I am like a whole other person outside of that. Sure, sure. And we wanted to spend more time in little mountain towns. And with porn, you have to really be in LA. And LA wasn't really our vibe at the time. So took a step out, but it's hard to get in when you're not doing it all the time. So it wasn't really an intentional break. It was like, I'm 19, 20, 21. I want to experiment and do everything from porn to mountain biking to whatever. And so it was kind of like that thing, just figuring out what I wanted to do more than intentional retirement. So, so if you were in LA and they were looking for a performer and say you hadn't shot in a little while, is that something you would have considered at the time? But it just seemed oh, like yeah. anytime an opportunity came up, you were halfway up a mountain somewhere. <laughs> That's exactly it, right? You have to be there to be able to take the last minute calls. And that wasn't a sacrifice I was willing to make at the time all the time. So that's, it really boils down to that. Like if I would have been ready and available, I would have done it, but my circumstances kind of took me out. For sure. So you weren't one of these performers that left and you were like, fuck the industry. I'm out. Da, 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 da. You Hello. just, it, it was, it was totally positive. It was just, it was hey, totally man. positive. And yeah. even when like I went and like led a normal civilian life and people would ask me about porn, I wouldn't be like, oh my God, no, I can't believe it. I'm like, yeah. What scenes do you want to see? What do you want to ask me about? Like, I'm very proud of the fact I did it. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing negative at all. It was just, I wanted to do other stuff. Yeah. Do you talk about how you made money during that time while you were away? Were you sherpaing people up mountains? I was, no, I told, I told people exactly. I've always, even with like my, like my mom and my dad, my family, I've always been really above board with everyone. I don't like lying. It's, I'm, my memory is too bad to keep up with it. Sure. It's complicated. And like, I am who I am. So I told everybody what I was doing. 
How about, oh, okay, but how about after you quote unquote left, you know, were you, <laughs> I mean, were you very lucky to be with someone who had tons of money or did you have to pursue another career after that? And what was that like pursuing another career after that? It was. So I went into nursing and like, I don't know if you know anything about nurses, mm. but I feel like we are severely overrepresented in the sex work space. <laughs> That's very interesting. I know two things about nurses. I've never been able to make one laugh. I don't know what it is. Medical professionals will not fucking laugh at my jokes. And two, I dated a nurse in college. Those vocab tests in the first year, I couldn't pronounce 90% of the words she had to memorize. So props to nurses. I give it up. You guys are great. Doctors pop their heads in and go like, looks like cancer and then walk out. The nurses Sorry. are in there doing the nitty gritty. So you actually, you, I mean, that's very impressive. You, you go from, you know, now I say this and I don't say it from my point of view. You couldn't do what I do from my point of view and feel this way. So let me say that a lot of people have the impression of sex workers, porn stars, adult industry people, whatever, as like, oh, too lazy to go get a real job. Totally. Too, too dumb stupid. to go, too, you know, too dumb to get a real job, blah, 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 blah. Every one in the adult industry I've, I've ever talked to could be marketers for you know fortune 500 companies it feels like uh there's people i've spoken to who are like yeah well i was on track for med school and then i just decided ah, i'd rather make my money on my back good for you if it's out there for there is no guy sitting in an office nine to five with a fucking fluorescent light flickering over his head who wouldn't rather fuck to make money hey sorry it's the reality of the world it's jealousness it's whatever moral judgment however it is so you went and you found a nice quote unquote respectable job as a nurse uh what brings you back to the industry it's funny you say it like that respectable right because it's almost like i want to turn that on its head so sure. you'll have the general population that be like wow like you're a nurse like what an upholding member of society and it's like really no the government like the standard of care is not great i can't take care of people the way i want like People are consistently getting fucked by the medical system. I felt more like a whore than I did being a nurse <clears> than I ever have selling sex for money. Mm -hmm. And that I will take that to my grave. Like I'm an intelligent human being, but they absolutely fuck you and you have no say. And you're dealing with people in the worst times of their lives and you don't have the tools to help them in the way you want. Like it's just, it's such a great profession to be in, but it's really soul sucking. I was going to ask how ex you as much of a helper as you want. How exhausting is it though? Have you ever slept better than a 12 hour shift after nursing? It's so fucked because I can't sleep after them. So it's <laughs> like, <laughs> I get uh, home at 6 a.m. and you're just like, it's the daytime. Mm -hmm. And then it's, I can't sleep in the day. And so it's like, it's so exhausting. But I also couldn't sleep after nursing shifts. Sure. Yeah. You move back into the industry. What was yeah. that? When did you decide? When were, did you just go one day? You're just like, going to do it. Wait, let me. Uh, was there a time between ending nursing and deciding to jump back into the industry? No, I'm still a licensed nurse oh, okay. with a job. Okay, fair, fair <laughs> enough. I don't really work it anymore. Like, quite frankly, when I first started back in porn, I took a pay cut. Like, I'm a, I have a lot of experience. I have almost 15 years nursing. Mm -hmm. And that comes with, you know, like a certain amount of experience and stuff that I can offer to my different employers. So my wage was really high. My husband came to me and he was like, we're both miserable. We got to do something else. He was an equipment operator in a gold mine. Okay. Like okay. that is a fucked up job. So two yeah. weeks out of the month, he would be gone and I'd be home with a kid working and like trying to make shit happen. And it's like, why are we doing this? Like, you just feel like one day you wake up and you're in the rat race. Sure. And he had always been a fan of Toby. So he knew who I was before we met. We met in a little ski town, which is a super cute story. But anyways, he was kind of like, you know, what can we do? And I started talking about OnlyFans together in 2022. And then it just evolved from there. Sure. He knew I'm a talented adult performer. And he knew that there's something there. So there was no... It and part of me asking if it's personal, let me know. Is he in the industry or he was just a fan of you prior to the industry? He was a fan of me prior to the industry. He's in it now. Okay. But mostly, I don't want to say stuncock, but that's really what it is. So he's in all of my like homemade OnlyFans videos. Okay. He's an exceptional performer. I want him to do more, but he's shy. 
Now, okay, so I always love when, when porn stars talk about relationships and stuff like that. There, okay, so he was a fan before. So obviously, there is there an openness to your marriage outside of filming, or is there a business and a personal aspect to it? If I can ask, and like that. to be, I love talking about this because, like, honestly, and I'm just going to be really vulnerable. It's something we're still figuring out. So sure. there's a level of openness. We're not open in the fact, like, when I come home, I'm not going out on dates and having sex outside of our marriage. But I also go on my work trips and I'm like, hey, Johnny Sands, do you want to fuck? <laughs> so I have this ability to be able to step outside my marriage in a very controlled environment. We're trying to figure out what that looks like on his end. So it's like he's not necessarily interested in doing pro scenes or even collaborations with other talent. And so we're figuring out what are the ground rules of him dating outside of our marriage i don't want to date outside but i'd like him to date outside okay but it's complicated it's honestly it's so complicated we're figuring it out is it easier hmm, and i don't mean in a cheating way is it easier to just have the fucking outside of marriage than it is to have the dating outside of marriage i would assume yeah i think that's where we get like tripped up it's like it would be so great if he just had like a roster of girls he'd call and be like, come over and fuck. But unfortunately, like most women don't work that way. If you want to go on Tinder, it's like finding it. You know, there's like yeah. a little bit of dating. And it's not always me that's uncomfortable with it. It's also him. So it's figuring out a way. I even said, like, hey, like, let's just like escorts. <laughs> it's like, he's like, no, I'm not into that either. And so, and I understand that. That, I mean, it sounds like even though you're still figuring it out, you have a really solid relationship, uh, like solid ground for it to be on because something may happen and one of you may decide like, you know what, I didn't really like that. But it doesn't seem like just from talking to you the short amount of time I've talked to you that that would be an earth shattering thing for your relationship. It's not like even me for it. Like, I'll be totally open. Like I had sex off of camera with a collaboration partner. And that wasn't necessarily okay without like a prior discussion about it. But that's something we learned by doing it, right? It's like, I do, did a collaboration and then we were so into it. We just kept fucking afterwards. And I was totally above board and honest. As soon as I told my husband, he's like clammed up and I'm like, oh shit, you don't like that. So then we're talking about like, what are the actual parameters? But this stuff is so healthy. It's like, we can talk about sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like it's complicated, but we're talking. So, again, we're still establishing rules, but do we have anything that is on his quote unquote no list for you in terms of scenes? Is there something? And I want to get to fetishes and kinks and stuff like that that you may be interested in or you may have lost interest in later on in the show. But is there anything for him where if you brought it to him, he might be like, he might do by the way i've done that same thing too when you just kind of claim up and you get quiet like, and you're uh, like you're like oh sadie yeah that was nice yeah no good good you had a good time yeah it doesn't i can always tell the scenes he's really into like he's not really into my when i do pro scenes he's not into my stepson stuff as much he wants to see me dominated by like a big black cop or somebody with like he wants to see me dominated by someone presenting as a strong solid Sure. Never wants to see, doesn't like me as like the dom or the instigator. Probably because he also knows me so well that he knows I'm a sub and that's not oh. my truest form. Sure. Um, but I'd say there's really no no's. It's more like, is he gonna jerk off to this or not? Okay, okay. All right. So that's my that's my barometer. <laughs> sure. So he has preferences for what now what um I guess that's what you just said. Just a real dominant good looking guy really making you happy in that instance the bbc right? he loves right and i think it's just because the contrast looks so hot like if you i take like huge clocks really well even though i'm so small for some reason just the way my body works and so it looks like shocking and amazing and then i'm enjoying it so i think he just likes like the visual opposition last question before we go to break uh i've talked about this with other performers and i'm always interested you said you're naturally a sub but i'm interested in what I always look at it, there's two main types of, of gangbang scenes. By the way, do you enjoy gangbang scenes or no? I love them. Okay, wonderful. There's two types. There's one where Sadie is the ragdoll and almost like, all due respect to you, being passed around like a flashlight at a New Year's party in a frat. Um, 
Then there's the other one where you're somewhat more of the dom. It's almost like you over here, you fill this one up, blah, 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 blah. Do you have a preference for those scenes? And does that go back if you choose the first one to more of your sub nature? I think like, and this might be a cop out, but like somewhat combining the two. So it's like, I, I'm not into like being like passed around like a rag doll. Like to me, I hear like free use when you're saying that a little bit, but it's like, I know that's not the intention. It's like, I want to be an active participant. So it's like, I want to be super submissive and passed around. But when they pass me around and I get on the dick, I know exactly what to do. I'm fucking like enthusiastic. I'm dominating the cock, but I'm submissive in like the next thing that's going to happen. They're going to put me there and they're going to take me there. I like being led by the guys in the scenes, but then when I'm there, it's like making the enthusiasm happen, if that makes sense. No, that does. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're there in the submissive, but at the same time, maybe if there's a lag, you go, hey, fellas, dick need it over here. Um, yeah, and I'm like an extreme, like I'm like a confidence sub. Like I know what I want. So if it's not happening, yeah, be like, bring it over or like I'll know what to do. Sure. But I do like to let them lead. Okay. All right. Very yeah. cool. Um, we're going to take a quick break and come right back. Remember, you can go to sadiesummers.com to find everything she's doing. Normally, I run through the list of plugs. I go, oh, the Instagram is this and the Twitter is this. And it's terrible when they're all different. That's um, why we have this all right here. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, sadiesummers.com. We're going to take a break. We will be right back. When the world tells you to go away, stop, leave, go. Don't. Instead, just come. Come, the new fragrance by the podcast that made you squirt. Available now at yourworstfriend.com. Come here, come there, come anywhere, just come. Do you have that gotta finish feeling that just won't quit? Would mistress be disappointed in the seed you've spilled? Now might be the time to try Guntrex. Guntrex, the first clinically tested YWF2 ejaculate inhibitor, allows mommy's pay pigs to pound all day without the complications of post-nut clarity. Side effects include loss of income, loss of home, loss of family, backed up prostate, homicidal rage, and dry basketball shorts. So if you're a quick shooter with a family that you're ready to ignore, talk to your doctor and see if Guntrex is right for you. Guntrex. Keep it in all night and get back to gooning for a goddess. Brought to you by yourworstfriend.com. All right, we're going to play I Said What. You like it when dirty girls talk nasty to you? I said what? Kind of obsessed with horse cops. Sadie, I Said What is the world famous game show that no one's ever heard of. It's very simple. I'm going to play a 10 second clip from you from a scene you were in and I need you to identify what website or movie the clip is from. It's multiple yep. choice. So after each clip, I'll give you three options to choose from. We can also re-listen to the clip as many times as you need to. Do you have any questions for me? Or are you ready to play? I said, I'm what? so ready. I'm so excited. Okay. First clip that I have for you today, Sadie Summers. Make him go just a little bit faster. <gasps> <gasps> I'm learning so much. Oh, what does it taste like, Diego? Yes, Diego, we all want to know what does it taste like. Uh, Sadie, was that from the website analonly.com, caughtfapping.com, or brutalfisting.com? That is caught sapping with the lovely little tiny Diego Sanchez. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. <laughs> That was a point. good scene. Yeah. It, uh, purple lingerie vibrator. Was it purple yeah. or red? Might have been purple. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Number two, uh, I need to know what website you shot this scene for based solely on the audio. Oh, yes. Stuff me full. Stuff me full. Stuff me full, I believe was your exact quote there. I am uh, gonna, so it's either DP Diva. You, okay, here are your choices. A, evilangel.com, B, okay. dpdiva.com, or C, bjraw.com. Fuck, oh fuck, it's not bjraw, because that was just me and Romeo. 
Evil Angel, I want to... I act... Fuck, I think it was Evil Angel. I think it was when I was getting DP. Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. Yes, yeah, because I heard Rob's voice and I love Rob's voice. <laughs> okay, so for future, future advice, maybe I need to not have the person's name in it. Uh, Did for, I say it? I think uh, the first oh, one said no, Diego. The yeah, second one, one said I didn't Diego. hear it. Okay. But I, okay. Rob has like, a, I, me and Rob, Rob was also a little bit of a Toby fan mm-hmm. back in the day. So we have a neat connection. Okay, well, then he may remember this scene. This is from, I need the movie title, which is always so strange for you guys because you could make a scene and it could get passed around to six different compilations, 25 different compilations, whatever it is. So the movie title for this clip. Oh, yes, 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 I want you to come in my fucking ass. I want you to come in my fucking ass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, please come in my ass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like you did this one for the title. Is that full anal Nelson? Let me give you your choices. You have oh. A, no, 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 no. Let me give you your choices. A, no. assault that ass nine. B, anal consumptions five. Or C, the classic, one of my favorite series of all time, Down the Hatch 20. A, it assault been that a. ass nine. It's B, A. It is oh, it's not. B. It is, in fact, B. Yes. It's B. The compilation, that's the and, one where I'm on the box cover. So I was going between the two. But that one, I'm pretty interesting. It is interesting. Yes. So, all right. We've established that game does work. Um, it does let, work. And it's, let, it's fun to hear yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Real, oh, yeah. I've never had that feeling before. But more power <laughs> to you. Um, so let's talk about Toby Pacific for a little bit. Uh, you said when you start your career in 20, uh, what is it? Uh, 2005, you started as Toby Pacific, right? I did. Okay. So that is my favorite era of content. Like if you look back at all of my favorite performance, it's so funny. I've, I've gone six weeks without getting laid in the last 22 years. So I'm not a guy who's like hard up to, you know, I met my wife when we were 19 after I got out of a relationship and it's just been off since then. But I, there's something I just enjoy about porn and I've always enjoyed about porn. It's happy people, hot people doing fun things, you know, should be on ESPN. Um, so Toby Pacific, uh, I've interviewed a couple people from quote unquote back in that day. I've talked to Gage, who I am a huge fan. I of. I love Gage. Love, love Gage. Gage. Love. She. She seems but like. What she's Aurora? Doing, uh, I have not talked to Aurora. It'd I would great. love to talk to Aurora. I'll give you my top fucking five right now of that time period if you want. Yeah, um, let's hear it. I really do. Oh, really? Okay. Number. No. Uh, let's do five. Ready? Let's okay. let's go from five. Uh, Faye Runaway, number five. <laughs> Beautiful redhead, right? No. Yeah. No, Faye Reagan. Faye Reagan. Yeah, Faye Reagan. Faye... Red hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Number four is Gianna Michaels. Okay. Number three. Now, these last three, you're going to be like, whoa, you pulled them out of nowhere. Heather slash Paris Gables. Yo, I don't know. Wow. Okay. She worked uh, a lot with Extreme Associates back then. Um... And she took on a persona. It was when the simple life was big or whatever that show oh was called God. with Paris Hilton. <laughs> okay, so she became okay. okay. And number two would be Cammy Andrews. I don't yep. know. Okay. Yep. And number one, my all time favorite, all all time favorite is uh Gia Paloma. Okay, I was gonna ask so Gia I have got some good stories. Gia Paloma is dirty, dirty, dirty girl. She was an exceptional performer. She loved the fuck. I never got to fuck her, but the guy I started in porn with wound up going to do a scene with her and two other girls. One of them was Derek Hayes' wife at the time, Hannah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. So he was married to this gorgeous British girl named Hannah. I forget what her last name was, Hannah. But Gia was just some, I remember looking at her as like a young, younger performer. And like I, I wanted to emulate that. Like she was so hardcore and she would do everything. So that's that's kind of my question to you and my question about that time. So it's funny because if you look back at some of the stuff that was going on at that time, you, people might be like, oh, that's what warped their minds. But no, I got a podcast interviewing porn stars. I turned out great. Um, what it was was the how how. 
I didn't like the real disgusting stuff. I, it's just not my thing. But what do you like, consider real disgusting? Is that like Max Hardcore? Is I, like I'm, real? Yeah, Max Hardcore, not my thing. I'm not. I'm not like a vomit guy. I'm not like any. Yeah, me I, neither. That's too. It's no. too. It's too much. I know some guys love it. Yeah. It's not. It's not for me. But what like, I, was Red Light your thing? I don't know. What is that? Red Light District. Oh, Red Light this, District. Uh, okay. A little, you know, almost a little too produced. I was more of like an extreme okay. associates guy. But okay. what, what I always liked was a girl like Gia Paloma, who it's like, no, I don't. If, if I, in your own fantasy, you know, that's what guys do. You put yourself in the fantasy of it. I don't want to be like, oh, my God, I would just slap fuck her and blah, 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 blah. No, I wouldn't. I was a fucking loser. I still am. Uh, what I do like, though, was all of the women back then, their assertiveness towards sex. It was, you know, I need this now. Come on, give it to me. Dirty talk is a huge thing for me. Um, I recently got my wife taught dirty talking. That's pretty great. Um, but like just the mouths on some of these girls back then would make sailors blush. And I like I think that's why Sasha Sasha Gray did so well when she came on the scene because she was like this little 19 year old but she talked like a 50 year old milf and it's like yeah. the fuck is coming out of her mouth like her dirty talk was amazing sure yeah uh, yeah I Sasha Gray was uh, you know I mean I could go down the list of all the girls at the time but it imprints you when you first get into uh, Lisa yeah. Spark so I believe I should be interviewing at some point soon um just you know the queens that's that's what you all were. And you were right up there on. I, I swear to you, I got to go back and look. I think one of the first DVDs I ever bought had you on it. Um, I love that so much. So let me ask you, we talked about how extreme things were back then, right? 2005 to 2024. What is different on a porn set, both either for better or for worse? Like you show up on set to shoot a scene. How different is it 20 years later, 19 years later? I'd say, like, honestly, like, the respectfulness is, like, both, like, relatively the same. When I got into porn, I thought it would be way senior than it was. I thought I was going to have to fight off sexual assaults left, right, and center. It's not. But one of the biggest differences for me is the overt discussion of consent and wow. what is appropriate. And so one big thing for me at 19 years old, like, I didn't have this assertive voice. If we were doing a scene and then all of a sudden someone was doing something I didn't necessarily like, like or felt good in the scene, I would not stop and say, cut, like, let's not do this. I would just like perform through it and keep going because I wanted to make a banging scene. And I feel like until you reach a certain age of your life, it's so hard to like speak up, especially in a crowd when you're doing this work. So I love the fact that on the front end of shoots, they do like a consent checklist with you, even some studios that you might think wouldn't do it some of the dirtiest ones will sit there and go through like a body checklist of your yes and your no's but for for me it's so good for like the younger generation of girls or even older girls who haven't found their voices yet to just have that off the get-go like for me i hate it hate it when guys try to get me to squirt so for me that's always been like a no but maybe i didn't always communicate that when i was 19 now i would but i always had the opportunity because it's like an overt discussion sure it was almost every single studio you go to why and also you know the performers have a little bit more power with the fact that they can just go to their only fans if they're successful enough and make all their money like i love making movies for studios i love the production aspect i don't need need it if i don't want it that's what I was. I, OnlyFans seems to have, and then all the other ones, Fansly, and all of those have really seemed to kind of turn the power a it little has, bit more. It has, and it's also least. given guys more agency. Like they used to treat the men in the industry like shit. Their day rates were terrible. The amount of work guys are expected to do for what you have to do is insane. It's sure. almost like they sometimes are like, "Well, you're fucking for money. You should be grateful." It's like, no, like some yeah. of these guys are taking meds, they're fucking their bodies up, they're so stressed out. Like, but now they're getting famous in their own right, and they can demand a day rate that is what girls' day rates used to be back in the day. And wow. I like them having a bit more agency. It's been forced, and I'm sure studios and directors probably have a beef with a bit of that because they don't have as much authority over the talent pool as they used to. Sure. Sure. It's really, like I said, it, it felt like it it turned everything on its head. So I've interviewed so many performers who tell me like, yeah, I like shooting with name site, but really it's an advertisement for my OnlyFans. Like it's just, you know, hey, 
Sadie Summer's name is out there now. Oh shit, that scene was great. Oh, I have a membership to that. Does she have an OnlyFans? You know. Um, so what was that again? You you ever see the movie Blast from the Past with Brendan Fraser? Fuck yeah. Okay. All right. What was it like walking out of your time capsule that was this is how porn was into this is how porn is? It's like it's really just like the talent, what they say goes. If they want MGen testing monthly, they're gonna fucking get it. And it's like, so it's kind of, it's like, it's really like I stepped out into like, it's almost as if like, you know, when like Ken goes out in Barbie world and he realizes like the way things are, it's like you walk out and it's like, things are better for the performers. Yeah. And yeah. I was so ha- I was really happy to see that it's like on its detriment in other places. I love studio production. I like like porn production, the professional aspect of it. I hate that it's kind of like going a little bit by the wayside. It's just the way it goes. Um, but it's really just like everyone that was performing had more of a say in what they were doing, when, how, and for how much money. And the studios had to comply. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to take one more break. We'll be back with one more game and we will wrap up with Sadie Summers. You can go to sadiesummers.com. Make sure you go there to follow her across social media, to sign up for her OnlyFans. We know how we push for that on this show. Make sure you go and pay for it. These people are working not for free, but for money. So make sure you push that. Uh, (laughs) sadiesummers.com. We're going to take a quick break. We will be right back. Tuesday, 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 this Tuesday, come on down to the YourWorstFriend.com arena and see Glam Slam. Come see all of your favorites, including Pinealius, Thyruleum, and Pancreosa. What happens when Ovarium leaves her homeworld to clash with the beast himself, Testosaurus Sex? Go to YourWorstFriend.com now for tickets. The election for Pineapple Grove Homeowners Association president is this fall, and it's the most important election of your lifetime. The current president, Dan Braun, thinks you shouldn't have the right to choose how to live your own life. It's time to vote Dan out. Dan Braun voted against the KY Slip and Slide event I tried to throw at the park. Dan Braun voted against the live nudes neon light on my mailbox. And when I tried to put a community fishbowl for keys in the Welcome Center, Dan Braun said, absolutely not. Braun, that's a German name, isn't it? Convenient. So this fall, vote for anyone except Dan Braun, because Dan's a dictator. And he's German. This ad was paid for by YourWorstFriend.com. All right, we're back. Sadie, I have one more game for you here. I'm here with my uh, guest for the night, Sadie Summers. I almost said the host. The host for the night, Sadie Summers. Let's go to our next game here, which I'm, again, trying out for the first time. I call it, because I'm so creative and intelligent and smart and everything else, porn words. Love it. Porn words is a lot like the game Password. But the guests are porn stars and the answers are porn categories or terms. So I'm going to give you a clue on what the word could be. And your job is just to tell me what the word is. Okay. I can't say any form of the answer in my clues. You can pass at any time. And if there's still time on the clock, we'll go back to get the ones you missed. Okay. (laughs) Not to be a hack or anything, but you'll have 69 seconds on the clock and 10 terms to figure out. Sadie, do you have any questions? Not already. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Ten words. I'm going to have to figure out what they are based on my direction. You have one minute and nine seconds on the clock. And go. Different races of people in a scene. Interracial. Uh, two in the same hole. Uh, DB, double badge or double anal. Keep going. Keep going. Double Balder. penetration. Nailed it. Okay. Dressing up like an animal. Furry? Kind of Fuzzy play? It. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, oral on a guy. Blowjob? Nailed it, okay. <laughs> All right. I drank too much water. Now I have I to... Yeah, yeah, of Squirt, course. Piss. Nailed it. 
Pissing. Uh, could have been the same thing. Uh, number six, don't pull it out and finish. Leave it in. And cream pie me. Nailed it. Okay. Uh, relate it to me, same age, but not by blood. Oh, step siblings. Let's fuck. There you go. Uh, a kink, the broader term, a kink. Uh, uh, he's really Aesthetic? into that. Nailed it. Okay. Uh, 10 seconds left. Um, back door. Anal. Tied up. Bondage. Nailed it. Nailed it with five seconds to spare. I ran that by uh, my disgusting pig co-host, former co-host yesterday, and he got to like question seven. You nailed it. You got it all. Sandy. I nailed it. I, I love it. I love it. I told you you got a dirty mind, man. I'm in the right job. <laughs> now, <laughs> for a tiebreaker, because I'm going to put different girls up against each other with this stuff, for tiebreaker, according to IAFD, the Internet Adult Film Database, as of this recording... How many male performers have you worked with? 37. 51. Little less oh. Christian than you thought. Yeah, 51 guys. Yeah. One better that. <laughs> um, Where did you find that? Uh, you don't know. Oh, see, am I the only This is how this is how creepy I am. I'm like looking at directors. I'm like, "Oh, I really enjoy that video." Uh, IAFD is the Internet I Adult I Film I Database, like IMDb for movies. Yeah, the porn one. I'm going as soon as we, as soon as Rob, that's uh, wrong. There you go. Um, so maybe we should, uh, is there any type of scene that in 2024 you won't do? We talked about disgusting. Take all the disgust. Like, yeah, I'm not going to fuck a dog. Yeah, I know, Sadie. Thanks. Totally. Uh, yeah, I actually, I don't, I'm not into like the double badge or double anal. For me, okay. mostly because like I can't envision a world and when, like, which that feels good. Ry like rhythmically, logistically, mm -hmm. one cock in my pussy and one in my ass feels so good. But there's like a wall between them sure. and the wall's mine. <laughs> for like against each other i just yeah double badge and double anal is not for me um kissing i used to be into but for some reason that's my like somebody just offered for me to go to the check and shoot and i would love to but they really want me to do pissing scenes and i realize that's just something i don't i have no interest in doing right now no interest in doing at all or no interest in being pissed on or no interest in pissing on someone i would love i will piss on other people okay. i just okay. have no interest in being pissed on for some okay. reason i all used right. to want to when i was younger so it's interesting like i want to explore that a bit maybe with my therapist or something <laughs> but why now it's just it doesn't appeal to me i always play a game or i used to play a game when i would do a different form of this show where i would say what is something say your normal rate is x amount what is something you would take a discount to shoot a type of scene or a fetish or something where you're or a performer you want whatever it is something you would take a discount to shoot and then something that dollar amount you know it doesn't matter how high it is the example i always use is sarah jay's never shot an anal scene and when i spoke to her she said i've been offered ten thousand dollars to shoot this type of scene it's just not my interest i have no interest in it and anal is more of like a normal thing um is there anything that you now producers that are listening to this don't think you get to shorter on this but what type <laughs> of scene would you maybe consider possibly taking a discount to shoot I'd say at this point, what I want to shoot more than anything is a gangbang with like the most amount of facials that I can possibly get. And for me, that would be something I would actually take a discount on because I know it's extremely expensive mm -hmm. for anybody to shoot that, especially when you're talking about every load you're paying money for. Because I don't want guys that are like Craigslist, hey, come drop a load on a porn store's face. I would like men that are professionals. But I'd like to do a huge gangbang bukkake scene and I would do a discount. But like you said, producers... Don't take note of that. It's, you know, for an example. Sure. Yeah. And then an the example. ones I wouldn't do would be just like what I said, pretty much like no amount of money, I think, at this point, and how like my professional integrity and how much I enjoy sex. I don't want anything to fuck that up. So I only do stuff I like. And like if I want more money, I'll just go make it doing the stuff I like. <laughs> so when I speak to new girls, they often hit me with the tough guy thing where they go, There's nothing I wouldn't do. You set a price. I, it's all I, right. I I'll just do it. I like that, but it's like you have to have a no list, or else you're everybody's fucking doormat. Like, well, don't, don't. It's funny. I've created a topic for their no list because when they say I would do anything, but I just immediately say those two little words: race play. And they go, No, 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 no. Hold on, I'm not doing that. No, no, no. You came from a time when race play was a little more prevalent. 
Um, I did. I've even now. done some of it myself where like you, you know, said things to men that like you would never utter in public. Sure. It's like now you look back on it and you're like, holy fuck, I can't believe like I had said those words. But the funny thing is, is I have so many like young, it's mostly like young black men in my OnlyFans who want that type of play. So I kind of have this dilemma right now where it's like, I don't feel comfortable saying those words. But if the recipient is, you know, the person who like the adjectives are representing and they're asking for it, does that make it okay? And so I'm kind of like, race play is a really complicated topic for me Mm -hmm. because I ultimately just say, no, I'm not comfortable with that. But if like a young black man is comfortable with it and he wants to pay me to do that for him, that's his king. Mm -hmm. Should I say it's, should I say yes? Is it wrong? I don't know. I, okay. Okay. All right. I'm a guy who's made some pretty racy jokes in the past, not race, R-A-C-E, just kind of like out there and, and, and nutty. It's not, it's not a good time for it, which sounds like I'm like, uh, you came to me and you're asking for a promotion at your job. Uh, my view is just not a good time, regardless of the male on the other end, young black guy going like, please say this. I want it. Totally. It, it's just that's not. how I feel about it, too. And that's why ultimately I've said no, because I just don't want clips of me at this day and age saying anything like sure, that on sure. the Internet. So aside from me wanting to fulfill someone's fantasy, because I'm kind of like that in a way, too. Like, I love to be a little bit if it's something I'm into, a bit of a fairy godmother. like, I want to fulfill your fantasies. I want to take care of you. But ultimately, those things are going to be out of me for the rest of my life. And so I have to be mindful about the shit I say in with AI and everything yeah. else. Just, yeah. AI is a real problem, by the way. It uh, is. And so I, it's just like, it's complicated. But yeah, for me, I don't do race play right now. But it's funny that that's the thing that you say. And it probably, the girls probably stutter because they're like, oh, wait a minute. I yeah. would not do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of girls who are uh, a lot, of, again, newer girls I've talked to just coming in the industry who are just gung ho, as I'm sure all of you ladies were when you first get in, where you're like, I'm a champ. I'll do whatever. Da, 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 da. And they go, There's a bit of psychology to that, I think, really? though. I think a lot of girls, like some girls, not a lot, but a majority get into porn. There is a bit of type A personalities there. And they love a challenge. And as soon as a director or a producer or another co worker, alludes to the fact that you can't do something they mm. want to do it more which but they which, know this so there's a little bit of fuckery in there right where it's like i'm gonna make the girl competitive enough that she actually wants to do this disgusting thing yeah. so it's yeah it's fucked up it's easier to do and i'm and people that's gonna piss people off but it's really it's easier to do that with the younger crowd than an older one sure oh well yeah they don't have the wisdom they don't have the experience it's funny did do I remember, did you shoot a lot of like, uh, maybe not a lot, but did you shoot like babysitter scenes and this and that back when you were Toby Pacific? Yeah, for Jim Power still, who's around to this Man, day. Yeah, Jim, oh, hire me, please. I would love to come back. I've been bugging him to hire me. I've I've, I've interviewed Jim and he was, I mean, you know. He's, he's, like, a, he's, a, he's a legend. Babysitters, Camp Nowhere, I did with him. I did my best days on set were with him and his crew. They're so fucking funny. Sure. They're the best. Yeah, I, I love talking to him. I thought it was great. It, that one was one of those interviews for me where it's like, I don't know how many people are going to watch this, but I got to talk to Jim Powers. It's I'm going to go back and watch, <laughs> I'm gonna watch that one of yours now because I love him so much. Yeah, I do too. I love him. Um, it's funny. You jumped right from, I don't know what the term was back then, teeny bopper-ish type of look. Da, da, da. Go away for a little while. Uh-oh, MILF's here. Time to go. Did you embrace taking on the milf role when you came back to the industry where you, or did you have any a little bit in you like you still look phenomenal and you still look Thank you. younger which is funny because in porn if you hit 24 and you know you look 20 well, you're a milf they'll immediately right? yeah, yeah exactly they'll immediately start labeling you as that so it is was, i embraced it 100 percent. like i noticed you know something i've noticed is like angela white will never be referred to as a milf not yet. And that to me is so curious because she's in the age range, but she's marketing herself that she knows that's not her space yet. Mm-hmm. Me going into it, I'm like, I know this is my niche. I know this is my space, especially considering like you're saying you hit 24, you're a male. I liked it. I'm like such a loving nurturer that I felt like it served me better. Sure. Toby was very like punk, chip on her shoulder. I love to do all this dirty, crazy shit because I can. But like Sadie's so intentional and just 
Yeah, it's just, it's different. Sure. Uh, we are going to wrap this one up, folks. Uh, I want to remind you, go to sadiesummers.com. Uh, make sure you follow her everywhere. It costs nothing to follow Sadie. But I yeah, do want you. Yeah, there you go. I want you to go to her OnlyFans, too. And I'm really going to push that this season where, again, these are performers. It, every little bit you could throw at them. It, well, why don't we set them on? Let's set them on with a discount link. Can we do that? Do you ha- yeah, sure. Just for going going deeper. Mm-hmm. So when you hear hear it, come on over, going deeper, and we'll give you a free trial. That's awesome. Come on That's in. That's great. See and what I'll I got. Put, I'll put links to everything in the episode description. So make sure you check that out. Ladies and gentlemen, Sadie Summers, thank you very much for coming on with me. Thank you so much. It's so great talking to you.